This weekend, comedian Richard Lewis said he's done doing stand-up, revealing that he's been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease for a while now. It was on Sunday that he posted the video. Part of that was to celebrate the end of filming the 12th season of the hit series Curb Your Enthusiasm. But he also updated his fans regarding his health. And I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and that was about two years ago. But luckily I got, got it late in life, and they say you progress very slowly, if at all, and I'm on the right meds, so I'm cool. So I guess I just wanted you to know that that's where it's been at. I'm, I'm finished with stand-up. I'm just focusing on writing and acting. Uh, I have Parkinson's disease, but I'm under a doctor's care, and everything is cool. It was a really upbeat message when I saw him post this on Sunday. So joining us today to talk about Parkinson's and the symptoms, Dr. Paul Coley. So let's tell people first and foremost what Parkinson's is and what causes it. And Parkinson's is a neurodegenerative condition. So we have this little area in our brain called the substantia nigra, and it has neurons in it that control our movement. And when you develop Parkinson's, you start to have degeneration of those neurons for reasons that we don't quite understand. And usually you've been having it for some time because you need to lose about 50% of those neurons before you start having those symptoms. And the symptoms are mostly related to movement when they start out in the beginning. So the first thing you might notice is a tremor. Mm -hmm. It's a resting tremor and they call it a pill rolling tremor. So think about rolling like a little pill in your fingers. You sort of keep doing that yeah. over and over again. But as the symptoms progress, you can actually get muscle rigidity. You can have trouble with your posture. You can even have trouble with your nervous system that regulates your blood pressure. And then eventually it can start to affect your facial muscles, your expression so we call it the masked faces. It looks like you're wearing a mask because you're unable to make those facial expressions. So when you talk about it, it is in the brain, but we see it in so many other areas, and almost all of us know somebody that's had it, but of course we often think of Michael J. Fox and yeah. somebody, well, in this case, being coming out and talking about it with Richard Lewis. So. Uh, what are we looking at for treatment and cures? Unfortunately, we don't have a cure because we don't know what causes it. Now, the treatments we're getting better and better at, and you know, it affects the part of the brain that's involved with the chemical called dopamine. So yeah, we I give medications called levodopa, which increase the levels of dopamine as a way to sort of offset it. And then we try to treat some of the symptoms. So you can get depression with it. We treat that, sleep disturbances, problems with speech and swallowing. So we work on treating that. But unfortunately, we don't have a ton of treatments that prevent the progression of the disease. Our treatments are sort of targeted at the symptoms at this current time. As we learn about what causes it, I'm hopeful we can develop some treatments. We've had friends who've gone down this road, and there's been talk about deep brain stimulation, some of the actual implants that people can uh, put into your, into your brain and, and then fine tune and, and theoretically really improve your quality of life. Yeah, this is incredible. So this talks about how we're not just using medications, we're thinking outside the pill box. So if the problem is with the connections in our brain that control our movement, well, how about we put in a stimulator into the brain where we can program in those connections? So it's really become a very popular treatment. We generally reach for these types of treatments more later in the course of the disease where the medications are starting to fail or the symptoms are progressive despite medications and you know everybody progresses at a different rate so it's hard to know and predict but for the most part as he said it's a pretty slowly progressive disease. We try to draw lines between the way we live our lives and heart disease and cancer and things like that. Is there any, anything they're finding as far as a pathway to Parkinson's that involves the way we eat or, or behave in different ways? Well you know there's some theories that it's linked to toxin exposure either herbicides, pesticides, even air pollution. We notice that men have it more than women and we we don't quite understand why that is, but that's been pretty universally noticed. And then genetics plays less of a factor as it does with some of the other conditions, but there are some forms of Parkinson's that are genetic. Now, Parkinson's disease is a specific disease. There's also something called Parkinsonianism, which is a kind of an umbrella term that anything that induces a movement disorder like Parkinson's, and that can be medications, that can be other types of things, that can be strokes, can also result in the same common pathway, the same types of symptoms. And often Sometimes those are tremors and things like that that we get confused. That's right. That's right. So now tremors are very common. So I don't want everyone who has a tremor to think right. that they have right. Parkinson's. And a lot of times people have what's called an intention tremor, which means when they're reaching for something, they start shaking more than when they're resting. But if you feel like you need a workup because you're starting to have any kind of neurological symptoms, tremor is one of the early signs. Talk to your doctor. But not every tremor is Parkinson's. Another good visit with the doctor. Thank you as Thank always, you. Dr. Paul Coley.